What's that? Oh boy. The six liter is getting a ton of love today. This combination has a few weird wiring things, but we're starting with a factory harness from a 2000 Silverado with a six liter. All the pieces are pulled out. We got coils, injectors, O2s, map, alternator, speed. Obviously, this is not going to be a regular standalone harness. The harness on the old motor goes through one of the kickbacks in the firewall and then up to where the computer is mounted. Yeah, I know it's a little messy. That's why we're doing this. So that makes the computer mounted somewhere here-ish. For passing through the firewall, I have two of these Deutsch connectors. One of them's got quite a bit more pins in it than the other. But with those, I can take and disconnect everything and pull the motor without having to disconnect the entire harness. I'm gonna start laying out the harness and we'll get the full plan figured out. The rainbow spaghetti is slowly coming together. I slimmed up the injector harness by combining all of the powers into one power wire for each bank. I also slimmed up the coil mounts so they're nice and smooth and clean looking. And I deleted these connectors because they just weren't needed anymore. So my computer is mounted inside the cab. So all of this has to go through the firewall. Right now I have the wiring just going through a hole and I don't like that. So I have two of these bulkhead connectors and I believe these are made by Deutsch. I have two of these here because I'm going to split everything that goes to the motor and everything else into two different bulkhead connectors. Things like the MAF, the O2s, and a few of the wires that have to go to the T56 are all gonna run through the secondary connector. So if I ever have to pull the motor, I can leave all that stuff intact, just unplug everything for the motor and pull it out. The big one's the main connector and that should end up right about here, do something like that. Well, that was a little satisfying. I just realized I have the wrong size pins. So there are four wires that I can put in these right now. And it's gonna be a couple days before those pins are here, which sucks because I wanted to run the motor tomorrow. And now I'm gonna have to wait. While I'm waiting for those to come in, we'll start repinning the computer. I've marked up the factory style connectors. You can read the numbers on the back there if you need to. These connectors will plug into either side of your computer without these on there. The blue and red covers are what actually prevents them from being able to plug into each other. I'm just gonna follow the pinout tables and label groupings of wires by sensor. Most of the harness laid out, I'm gonna start working on the fuse block. This is gonna be very similar to your three wire harness. What they mean by a three wire harness is you have three wires that you need to hook up to make the thing run. I like to break my fuse blocks out into constant power and ignition power. First thing I'm gonna get set up is our power coming in. These are the fuse blocks that I'm using. So the name right there is the part number. You can find those all over the place. These fuse blocks come with one pole that's joined, so you can power all at once, and then a bunch of individuals. Okay, 
Okay, so I got main power set up on a single, and I'm gonna have that come in. I suppose you should back up a step here. The relay junction blocks that I have slide on to these fairly well. So I'm gonna take and have those mounted on the side and then click two of these together so they'll be along like that. So the orientation that we're gonna have is with these guys facing to the right. So I'm gonna come with my wire on the side with the tabs and I'm gonna click, click that into place. And I'm gonna bend the wire with a nice generous 90 so it's gonna come off the side like that. Junction pole, I guess is what I'm gonna call it. I'm gonna set up with a pink wire for our ignition. Get that guy crimped on. Click that guy in. Now I'm gonna take and slide all my pieces together here. So I have my battery power, my ignition power, and my ignition relay. Usually with these, you'll have a secondary relay and that one will be for your fuel pump, but I'm running my relay back by the pump. Okay, so now we're gonna take and set up our ignition relay. So that's where that one's gonna go, but I'm gonna put that piece in last so I can have better access to all of our wires over here. Now our output from our relay when it's triggered is gonna go to our other junction connector. Put that into the output spot for our relay. I'm gonna pre-bend this one right about there. If you're using these style fuse blocks, pay attention to the orientation of these. They only go in one way. Okay, now we can start working on our four, or there's more than four wires, but our handful of wires that are going to be coming in. We have our ignition trigger wire, which is this pink black. That's gonna have to go to the relay. Uh, the only battery power wire that we have in this specific setup, and that is the constant power to the computer. Now I'm gonna leave these with some length to them so that I have a little bit of freedom with placing this fuse block. So constant power to the computer, that's your C1, which is blue, C1-20 and C1-57. Both need to have battery power. Okay, so that's all that I'm gonna be running for battery power. Typically, you'd have another one of these, which would be your fuel pump power if you were running your fuel pump relay. Moving on to the ignition. I like to do A bank injectors, B bank injectors, coils plus ignition power for the computer, uh, O2 sensors, and mass airflow on the last one. All right, both of these red ones are the coils. These are usually pink. I didn't have the right size pink wire, so I used red. Click, and second one. Okay, I still have to combine the coils and constant power. I got those combined now, so we'll get the end on it. Get that one in there. Okay, and the last one going to the fuse block is our O2 and MAF sensor power wire. Okay, so the last thing we gotta do is relay and the ground. Now we're gonna finish up the relay. So we're gonna trim up our ignition trigger wire. Okay, ignition trigger wire goes through one of the coil plugs. Come on, click for me. Ah, help if I put it in the right way. And then the ground for the relay coil. Fuse block is done. This is called a three wire harness because you have your main power and ground and an ignition source. Hook those three wires up, hit the starter, and you should be running. All right, the motor is on the run stand. If you guys wanna see the run stand in some more detail, I can make a video on that. There's a half-baked video somewhere in my archives that I first started building it. But anyway, if that's something you wanna see, let me know down in the comments and hit that subscribe so you don't miss it. I definitely didn't just spend a half hour chasing a dead relay. That's fine. We're in HP tuners. I am by no means a professional tuner, so do not take anything I do in this video as advice. We swapped out the injectors, so the first thing we gotta do is the injector data. Okay, that was a bunch of incoherent rambling. So basically what I did for anybody who's interested, we swapped out the injector data for the new injectors that were put in. 
did a normal basic standalone tune, you know, deleting EGR, things along the lines of that. And then we raised our idle RPM, our idle airflow, and gave it a little bit of, or took away a little bit of fuel in the cranking VE to help the thing start. I've been chasing my tail getting the fuel pump to fire up. And I checked my tables here. Red 9 is a green-white stripe. And if we look, red 9 is right there. No wire. So that's why a fuel pump no work. I put it into blue 9. So I'm going to fix that. Fingers crossed that that is the only oops in the wiring. Now, key on. Oh, gotta put power back up. All right, we have power, key on. Now we should have fuel pump. Yep. So all I have for a fuel setup is the bottom half of a factory fuel pump going right to a piece of hose, and I just have it hardwired going over to a relay. So when you have these things fresh and dry, you're gonna have to cycle the pump a few times until it starts pumping. That should also flush any junk out of the line because you don't want that in your injectors. All right, last thing before we fire this up, we're looking at throttle position center voltage. We're at 51 volts. Now I'm gonna give it just a little bit more throttle and you can see that that voltage goes up. So I know this is gonna require more air with more throttle blade to start. So I'm gonna open up the throttle blade with the set screw until I'm seeing 60 or 0.65 volts on the throttle position sensor voltage. I've got a rating between 0.63 and 0.65. Now the reason you want 0.65 volts is that is where the sensor is programmed to return to 0% throttle. If you don't have 0% throttle, you run into issues. All right, last thing to do is get the fuel hooked up. I'm gonna turn it over a little bit without trying to start it to maybe get a little bit of just Trying to get a little bit of oil going. Here we go. What's that? Oh boy. Now I can, I can at least see what's going on. smoke over here just making sure it's something burning off the headers. One of our wires are hot. <laughs> but it's alive! I don't know if you could hear it in the videos, but there was some kind of hellacious noise on the passenger side bank, and it sounded bad. So 
So I'm over here and I'm messing with stuff and I, I don't know what's going on and I grabbed the dipstick and the dipstick's just vibrating like mad. I pulled it out. The end of the dipstick caught the windage tray and then got sucked up underneath. So the crank was coming around and hitting the dipstick. Crazy. Pulled it out, straightened it, put it back in. Noise gone. She sounds like a dream. All right, we had to do it at least once. work. There's a pretty substantial jump in time here because I lost a ton of footage. And that really sucks because it was a lot of awesome footage of tearing the truck apart, modifying the firewall and the trans tunnel, putting the motor back in. We had an issue with the trans mount that was made for the 4L60, so we made a new one that had to take the trans out and that trans mount I just made didn't work. So I had to cut that off and make another one. All kinds of awesome juicy content that's just what building something like this is like, and it's all gone. So I'm gonna get that issue figured out because one, it's disheartening, and two, it really sucks because you guys are missing out on awesome content. This should be going up Sunday. I'm leaving Thursday to go down to C10 Nationals. Truck's gonna be there, we're gonna be ripping, cameras are gonna be there, and they're gonna be working this time. So we'll catch y'all at C10 Nationals.